Quadratic functions can be represented in three different ways. Remember that standard form, this c value, gives us our y-intercept. Vertex form, hence the name, gives us the vertex. So h is the x-coordinate of the vertex. k is the y-coordinate of the vertex. Factored form will give us our x-intercepts. This is our one x-intercept. This is our second x-intercept, if that parabola happens to have two x-intercepts. Each one of those forms has an a value. A tells us the direction of opening. So if we have a positive a value, our parabola is opening up, we're going to have a minimum. If we have a negative a value, our parabola is opening down and we are gonna have a maximum. That vertex is gonna be either a minimum or a maximum depending on the direction of opening. So when solving problems involving quadratic functions, the first thing you always want to do is to create a sketch and then label all of the information that you know, beginning with what each axis represents. So we can see in this particular question, in the place of the y, we have d equals. So that's going to go along the y-axis. And we can see that that d is measuring the depth. That's going to be the dependent variable, and it's measured in meters. We can see that the x, that's going to be our independent variable. That's the distance that we are from from the edge of the pool. So we can go ahead and label that. And then I recognize that because this function is represented in vertex form, I can really quickly get the coordinates of that vertex. So I can see that my x coordinate is going to be positive 5. Remember, it's always the opposite sign when we're in brackets here. My y coordinate is going to be negative 0.3. And then I'm going to go ahead and plot that point on my sketch. And this is not drawn to scale. This is just a rough approximation so I can see what's happening. We also know that a y intercept occurs when x is equal to 0. So I can substitute 0 into the place of that x and then quickly just enter this into the calculator and get the y-intercept. So we have a y-intercept at 0. So on the y-axis we can also plot a point at 0. We also know that the vertex lies on the axis of symmetry. So we're going to have a vertical line, the axis of symmetry, passing through the x-axis at 5. That's the x-coordinate of that vertex. The parabola is symmetrical about that axis of symmetry. So I know that every point on that parabola is equal distance from there. So I know if one x-intercept is five units to the left, the other x-intercept is going to be five units to the right. So we can go ahead and plot that on here. That's going to give us another x-intercept at 10. Each of those is five units from that axis of symmetry. Based on those three points, I can draw a rough sketch of that parabola. I can see that it's going to have to open up in order to pass through those points and then check the function. A is positive, so it should be opening up. The parabolic profile is just if you were to kind of cut the pool down the middle, what it would look like, the shape of it. And so I can see that with this particular context, my domain is going to go from 0 to 10. So even though the function continues indefinitely along that x and y axes, we're only going to be looking at this piece of that function. So now we can start to answer what we're being asked. So in this case, what is the maximum depth? Depth is on the y axis. My maximum depth will be the y coordinate of that vertex. So I can see that I'm going to be 0.3 meters below the surface. How wide is the pool? And again, based on our sketch, we can see that we're going from here to here, so our pool will have a width of 10 meters. Revenue is the amount of money we make. If I'm selling a product like cookies, then my revenue is going to be determined based on the price that I charge. So let's say we charge $5 per cookie and the number of cookies sold. So if I happen to sell three cookies at $5 each, my revenue is $15. This is different than profit. With profit, we would have to subtract the expenses of making those cookies to see what we actually brought in compared to what we put out, such as ingredients, etc. So revenue, just how much money are we making from selling our product? If I sell four cookies, my revenue is now $20. If I sell five cookies, my revenue is now $25. So to bring in more revenue, we either have to sell more items, that's gonna get us more money, or we could also increase the price of our cookies. If we sell each cookie for more, that's going to bring in more money as well. If we increase the price of our cookies, we're going to bring in more and more revenue. But if we increase the price too high, we may have less people buying our cookies and that's going to cause our revenue to fall. The goal as a business owner is to bring in the most money possible. So we're looking to maximize that revenue. Knowing that the price impacts the number of items sold, we can use what we know about 
about quadratics to help us determine what that maximum y coordinate is going to be. Because revenue depends on the price of our item as well as the number sold, anytime we see a revenue question, we're going to use factored form to set it up. So I'm going to have one factor representing price, the other factor representing the number sold. So R is in the place of the Y, so this is going to be our revenue, and it is dependent on the number of increases or decreases, if we lower the price, if we have less sold, etc. We're going to use that variable n to represent number of increases or decreases. That's really important. So when we go to do this, I'm going to start by setting up my two brackets, and I'm always going to check to see what is the original price and what is the original number sold at that price. So in this particular question, we can see that we're charging $6 per plate, and then at that price, we can sell 120 plates. So my current revenue, if we were to multiply 6 times 120, I'm currently bringing in $700. $120. And now something is going to change. For each $1 price increase, 10 fewer plates will be sold. So I'm going to take my price bracket and we are going to increase by $1 increments. So I'm going to go up by 1n and then I'm going to have 10 fewer plates sold. I'm going to go down by 10n and it's really important you have that n in each of these cases. So if I go up by $1, I sell 10 less plates. If I go up by two $1 increases, I sell 20 less plates. 2 times negative 10, 20 less plates. If I go up by three $1 increases, so that's up by $3, I'm now selling negative 10 times 3 30 less plates. So every $1 increase, we are selling 10 fewer plates. This now creates a quadratic function in factor form, where if we were to FOIL this out, we're going to have that n squared there. We have a degree two function. And so because we're looking to maximize the price, trying to see how much money we can bring in, we can go ahead and graph this and then find our maximum. All right, so when we go to graph this, we're going to go into this y equals, and then we're going to enter in factored form. We don't want to make a mistake trying to turn that back into standard form. So let's just go bracket. And we're going to go 6 plus 1, I don't need to put the 1 in, I can if I want, times the variable. So here's our variable key. Close that first bracket and then open the second bracket. 120 and then minus 10 times the variable. Close the bracket and then we're going to see what this graph looks like. Now we know we're going to probably have to change the window. It appears to just be a straight vertical line, but our revenue, remember, is going to be quite high and my window right now is the default window. So I'm going to change my Y maximum first. So let's say we change this to a thousand because remember that represents the amount of money we're bringing in. And if I'm going from negative 10 to a thousand, I'm going to also adjust the scale. So let's say every 100 units will have a tick mark. Now we're still going to have to probably change this a couple times but we can take a look to see what we've got now oh and actually that's not too bad because we're looking for the vertex sometimes you may have to move the X maximum over as well but we're looking for that vertex and then we're going to use the calculator to get it so we're going to go second function trace and then I want my maximum number four so we're going to choose number four and then the calculator prompts you so it says are we to the left so we're going to get close to the vertex here so I'm currently on the left I'm going to press enter to say yes the calculator says, are you on the right? So I'm going to use my right arrow and we're just going to hold it down, scoot over so that we are clearly on the right. Press enter to say yes. Then the calculator says, do you want me to guess? You can see those little arrows there. It's going to be guessing within there. That is where the vertex lies. So we're going to press enter and then it's going to give us the coordinates of the vertex. So we have that 2.99, etc., and 810. So that tells us that we have a maximum revenue of $810, a maximum because our parabola is opening down. Revenue is our Y axis, so that Y coordinate of the vertex represents revenue. So we have a maximum revenue of $810 when N is equal to that 2.99, etc. Now remember, N represents the number of increases or decreases. So the number of times we increase or decrease gives us that maximum revenue. Now, what is the question actually asking. In this particular question, we want to know what should the members charge if they want to raise as much money as they can. What should they charge? That's the price. So we're actually wanting to know not the number of increases. That's not going to tell us a lot. We want to know what is the price we should charge. So let's take our price bracket here 
and we're going to substitute in the value of n, so that 2.999, et cetera. Six plus one times that value is going to give us 8.99, et cetera. And we're going to round to the nearest cent. So right here is where we're gonna cut it off. The next number happens to be a nine. So that's going to bump this nine up to a 10. That's gonna bump this to a 10. That's gonna bump this to a nine. So $9 per plate will maximize our revenue. That's gonna help us bring in as much money as we can. Let's try one more. So this is again a revenue question. We can see that we are selling 200 bags of mini donuts at $6 a piece. So when we go to set this up, we know that revenue is the price times the number sold. Something now changes. So we are going to sell 20 more bags for each 30 cent decrease in price. The price is going to drop by 30 cent intervals. So into our price bracket, we are now decreasing by 30 cent increments. And as we drop the price, we are selling 20 more bags. So the price goes down, the bags goes up. So we're gonna sell 20 more bags for every increment decrease in price. So we drop by one 30 cent decrease, we sell 20 more bags. We drop by two 30 cent decreases, so we drop by two times 30 cents, we go down by 60 cents, we go up by 20 times two, 40 more bags are sold. Those always relate to one another. And then we can graph our function in factored form to try to get the coordinates of the vertex. So we're gonna go into y equals, we're gonna enter it exactly the way we see it. Don't forget the n here as well as here, otherwise it won't be a quadratic. You're going to end up with a linear equation. We're gonna take a look at the graph. Now my window is set from what it was with the last problem. We may have to adjust it. So we're gonna take a look and yeah. So we can see that we need to go up on the y maximum. We also need to go over on the x maximum. So we're just gonna try some values here. So we can't even see where it comes down. So maybe let's try going to 50. And then if I'm going from negative 10 to 50 on the x axis, let's do a scale maybe of 10. And then we need to go up on the Y maximum. So let's try 1500. And again, you might have to play with this a little bit more to see the vertex. There you go, we can see this now. We didn't need to go quite to 50 on the X axis, but that's okay. We're gonna go second function trace, and then number four is the maximum. And again, if you can't see the cursor, look at the bottom here. So we can see currently it's at 20 and zero. So only using the left or right arrows, we're gonna come back over here. So we are to the left of the vertex. So if this is my vertex, imagine we are now on the left of it, if there's a vertical line there. We're gonna hit enter. We're gonna scoot over so that we are now on the right of that vertex. We're gonna hit enter. And then the calculator wants us to guess within that area there. So we're gonna hit enter one more time. And there are the coordinates of the vertex. This now tells us that we have a maximum revenue of $1,350 when the number of either increases or decreases is equal to that 4.99, et cetera. What is it that we are being asked for? In this particular question, we need to know how many bags is going to allow us to maximize that revenue. So this is the maximum revenue can, we can get. We need to figure out how many bags we need to sell in order to hit that revenue. So we're going to look at the number sold bracket now. Within that number sold bracket, we're going to substitute in the number of increases that will allow us to maximize our revenue. So we're gonna substitute that value in there, multiply it by 20, add on 200, and that's gonna give us 299.99, etc. We cannot sell part of a bag. And so in order to hit that maximum, we need to sell 300 bags. So there's two parts to this question. The first one, what is the maximum daily revenue? That's going to be that $1,350 here. The number of bags sold to achieve that revenue is going to be 300 bags. So remember, if it's asking for the price we need to sell or the number sold, take the bracket that we're looking at, substitute the end value into the appropriate bracket, and that allows us to get whatever it is that we are being asked.